Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing great today. I hope you had a great day yesterday. The weather uh, here in Oceanside is amazing today. There is nothing better than waking up and seeing sunshine uh, right off the bat. So thanks for joining us. And um, we're in Leslie Denny Group Fitness Group. And remember that next Sunday we have a schedule change. Um, we're, I'm going to be introducing a class that I'm going to be teaching over at uh, another gym at 9.30. So I don't get it out until 11 o'clock. And what we'll be doing is we'll be doing the ball class at 12 noon. And then we'll follow up with yoga at 1 o'clock. So there, are, I'll, I'll repost that schedule change as the week goes by. And remember, if, you, if that's too late in the day for you to start and do your practice, then just remember that you can watch it in the archives because I'll post it right away. So today, um, let me sit down here. Can you see me? Hello. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on your butt. Let me push this up here. So this is pretty great. Let me get this balanced a little bit because I'm not used to doing this. There we go. This is actually a very good overall view of the buttock uh, gluteal muscles that I talk about a lot. And what we're going to be focusing on is this entire area. And if you notice, your glute maximus is over here. The tensor fascia lata that I talked about last week is right up here. And then when we move over here, what I want you to notice is the piriformis is this guy right here. And way down here is where, um, let me get my finger down there, down here is where the ischial tuberosity is. That's your sit bone. So, and then your max, your, you can see the maximus muscle again, but the glute actually up through here, and I'm, I'm going to kind of bring my finger over here, is the medius muscle right in here, and then the minimus muscle is buried within there. So today, what we're going to be doing is really exploring the glute muscles at a pretty high level of intensity. So what you want to have available is um, a small twin set of the yoga tune-up balls. If you don't have those and you're local and you want to buy some, come to me because you're not going to get a better price anywhere. And then one larger ball. If you don't have anything right now, a tennis ball is, is very useful to be able to help you out. And if you have a couple of them, that'll be super helpful. What we don't necessarily like to use is balls that are super, super hard. I don't know if you've seen the ones that have the little like spikes on them and stuff. Um, you don't want to use something at that level of intensity because it, it really plays havoc with your parasympathetic nervous system and encourages the connective tissue actually to bind tighter. So meet me on the mat. Let's get started. If you have a little bit of an oil that you like to work with today, feel free to have that handy. I'm using a little blend called Arise. It's got like a peppermint as well as a citrus in it and it's it's really yum so feel free to place that on and then come to a comfortable seated posture if you also have a strap and a uh, block of some sort that can be really helpful as well so just but remember make do with what you have because that is the essence of this practice today so in coming to that comfortable seated posture, let's just close our eyes for a few moments and take a few deep breaths. And then as you're in that seated posture, notice how your hips feel. Typically for a lot of us, they feel pretty tight, especially on the exterior um, portion. And you may feel a little bit of discomfort at the very base of your buttocks because that sometimes happens, happens to people as well. And a lot of that can be emanating from the piriformis. There's a lot of piriformis syndrome uh, that doctors will write about 
And yet, when we work the musculature that is around the, your sit bone, the ischial tuberosity, then you really start to help in, indirectly relax the piriformis muscle. Remember, all of these muscles reside around and, and can, as they get tightened, place, place weight onto the sciatic nerve. And when we loosen up these buttock muscles, then it lessens the connective tissue that is binding around the sciatic nerve and helps that settle down a little bit. So sometimes for some of us, if you have some, like it, it, we would always call it like a shooting pain that goes down periodically through the back leg because it's the longest nerves in your body emanating from the sacrum and goes right down through the backs of the legs. So this can create a lot of relaxation through your body by working through the glutes. So let's start. The first thing that we're gonna actually do is we're going to tackle that TFL muscle like what we did last Sunday. So you wanna grab the largest of the balls that you have, and when you lie down to the mat, let me get my mic out of the way, my country for a wireless mic, right? As you stretch the legs out, you're gonna place one hand on the top of your hip bone and then slide the fingers out to the side. And then from here, you're just gonna feel, as you draw the knee towards you, there's gonna be that little pop-up right there. That's your TFL. So from here, you're gonna place that large ball right in that spot. And then notice that I'm kicking my top hip forward and I'm gonna start circularly massaging into that area. And this just really feels fabulous. It's, it's such a good um, feeling, but it tends to be a little bit of an awkward position. So just keep rolling, <clears throat> excuse me, in that circular motion. Good, and if you wanna put some music on, feel free to do so. For our ball and our yoga classes, I typically don't play any music because everybody's different with what they like to listen to. So you may have something that you prefer. And then once you lodge yourself there, you're just compressing right into that spot. And it's not directly to the outside, it's a little bit more forward. Then take the top foot and just anchor it. I'm gonna give my heel to the mat. And then lift that bottom leg and sweep it forward and back. And just really, that, that's pinning and stretching. Remember when we pin a particular area and then move the closest joint. And that really massages deep into that area. Then from there, you're just going to go ahead and roll your back body and sit yourself up. And if you have to kind of realign yourself because I popped off my mat. And I'm sitting way back. So I'm gonna roll that ball right up to the top of the hip and around and just see that I'm kind of going into an oval motion of just sweeping it around and doing an overall roll, just an overall roll through the whole buttock area. That, that we will do just a couple more times and then we'll swap it to the other side, but first we're gonna do a seated upright cross-legged position to check in and see how that feels and then release from there, and then come to your upright seated posture. Do you notice how that one knee on that side that you just worked just kind of feels like it's popping open a little bit more? The littlest things that we do for our muscles, especially in the buttocks area, will just open up those hips. So it doesn't take a lot of work. So let's swap it to the other side. I'm gonna skim you my way down here. And you know where this is now, but if you wanna do that little test, you're welcome to it. And then swap it over to the side. I'm gonna back to the back part of my mat here. And then start circularly moving into that area. Oh, that feels really good. And I've got a lot of cat hair all over the place because my cat came up and gave me a love fest. And as I was petting him, he just shed all over. And keep massaging. And then remember, top foot forward and sweep that bottom leg forward and back. 
I've got a lot of stuff in the way, so this is a little more challenging. And just sweep it along the mat a few times. And most of this is actually, you can do it against the wall. I'm not demonstrating the wall motion with this today, but you could absolutely stout, stand against the wall and be able to work it from there. And then slowly start to roll to the back body and just bring that ball right into the center of your glute. I'm gonna pop it right there. I'm sitting up pretty high, and then this is that little circular motion that I'm going through just to give an overall roll. And make sure that you have some water. You always wanna drink some water throughout your um, movements that you're going through when you're starting to break up connective tissue and rehydrate it because it flushes it out. And I know that for those that have been to a massage therapist, those amazing professionals, um, they always follow you around afterwards with a little glass of water to make sure that you start hydrating right away. And then release from there and come back to your seated posture and just check in. And all of a sudden that might feel a lot looser just right there. Yeah, I see the hearts. Yeah, exactly. So now we're gonna go back with, still with a large ball and we're gonna go exploring into the piriformis area. But we'll start at that sit bone area, the ischial tuberosity. So when you come to sit upright, you're gonna find that sit bone, that very prominent bony uh, sit bone. And when you come up, I want you to just circularly massage around that bony area. And this is another one of those where if your wrist joints and shoulders are bothering you, just sit your way up against a wall and, and let the wall support you. So as you circle around the sit bone, then you're slowly going to go above the sit bone and walk your way down and go just a little bit higher. And then you're gonna sweep the hip from right to left. This is getting in toward the area of the piriformis. And as you sweep to the inside of where that upper portion of the sit bone is, that's where for most of us, it gets really sensitive. So just keep sweeping, just go to the level of intensity that you can. If, if seated against it is uncomfortable, you can do this against the wall, but it's not nearly as effective as when you're seated on top of the ball. And then bring that ball just to the inside of that sit bone and drop that knee open. Just rest it open so that you're just into deep compression right there. And take some deep breaths. Good, and then release from there. Nice, come to a seated posture and check in, right? Starting to open up a little bit more, a little bit more at a time. So now we're gonna swap it to the other side. You're in search of the bony sit bone. And as you sit up on it, you're just gonna circle around that bone to start. There's a lot of thing, you know, obviously product, you know, muscles, ligaments, and whatnot that you've got going on inside uh, your glute area. And they're all layered on top of each other and attached to different things. So there's so much work that can be done with the simplest role that will affect all of it. And um, always remember that we're not using it as a, a sample today, but typically we'll start to see a lot open up in the upper part of your body from doing this type of work too. So you're gonna find your way just to the top of that sit bone and then press your way down and go in just a little bit. Ah! Yeah, that's, that's, a really, that's a really good spot. And I say good very loosely. So just, just hold on to it there. 
Take a couple of deep breaths and then drop that knee open. One side may be tougher than the other. I can feel that this side has been taking the load a lot. I'm usually right side uh, dominant, but um, the left side did a lot of work over the last few days as well. So it's pretty tight. But as you start to relax that knee open, you'll start to feel the difference. So just keep letting go. Good. And then release from there and then come back to your seated posture and just notice how things are starting to open up more and more. It may not be a dramatic change, but it's a significant change and that's what we're looking for. So now you're going to pull out the two small balls. And remember, if you don't have these tennis balls, we'll substitute. But again, if you're in the area, just text me or PM me and um, I, can, I can leave them on my porch for you to come by and pick them up. So you're also going to want to want your strap. So we're placing the small balls square in the center of each of the buttock. And you're going to grab your strap, anchor it at the end of one foot. The other knee is bent as an anchor. And then start to sweep that leg around. Try to make some big broad circles. Now, if you don't like your head dropped back, you can use a block to keep it supported. So that's, that's an option. And we're going to be on the leg that we are circling. We're just going to kind of move that ball around into different areas, but leave the other one right in place. So just keep that one ball in place on the opposite side. But now lift up the hip and roll the ball higher and start circling the leg around from there. That other ball is just static. If it starts to pop out, just put it back in place and keep circling that leg either direction or alternate from one direction to the other. That's, that's great too. And then you're going to pop the ball out to the outer edge of the glute. So as you lift up, roll that ball out to the edge and it may just feel like it's fleshy, you know, that's holding on to it. And then what you're doing is you're getting more into the medius muscle, the gluteus medius. And as you pin it there, it's a little higher on the hip, out to the side, you're going to go ahead and stretch the opposite leg down and bring this leg out to the side. Hello, can you feel that? And then you're just going to give a gentle tug on that leg that's out to the side. And just keep massaging right into it. Good. And then bring the leg up, bend the other knee, lift it up, and now place it almost not to the spine, but still at that height up on the glute and bring it inward. And then from here, go ahead and stretch the opposite leg down and bring that leg in and over just a little bit and compress. Deep breathing. Focused breathing really helps the experience. It really increases that blood, you know, moving through your body, which helps oxygenate and release that uh, myofascial connective tissue. Good. And then bend the knee on that leg that's lengthened, lift up the hip, and then bring that ball down. And then from here, bring the leg down and point through the heel. You can stretch the other leg down as well. And that's just creating a straight compression down in the lower portion of your glute muscle. So just hang on to that. Take a few deep breaths here. And notice I'm just stretching that leg out and I'm really holding on to the strap.
And then from there, go ahead and release the balls out of the way. Roll yourself to the side and push yourself up and come to that seated posture. You sit down. For me, that is a noticeable difference of how much more relaxed that glute tissue is right here. In fact, I can feel it. I'm a little more fleshy. On this side, softer, it feels better. So let's swap it off to the other side. I'm gonna scoot my way up the mat so that I have some stretch in space. And as I lie down, keep my strap handy. Both balls go into the very center of the buttock area. Then one leg, the, op the leg, one leg comes up, the opposite leg that you didn't do, and the other leg is down to the mat. And I slowly start to circle this around. Now, this is an observation that I'm just going to point out to you on me. But the, remember that when I said originally that left side was awfully tight when we were searching in towards the piriformis area, I can also feel that I have incredibly tight hamstrings on this side too. So for whatever reason, I really took a lot more unconscious load on the left side of my body and made it work harder. That happens sometimes. We don't realize that sometimes that we are con subconsciously favoring certain areas of our body. And it could be just that my right body or my right hips were pretty tired. And so the left had to take the load. Good. And then as you lift, you're going to bring that ball up and out to the side. Remember the other ball is staying right in place. Then I'm going to stretch that leg down and then I'm going to start circling again and just massaging right into that. And then I'm going to bring that leg out to the side and give that little tug. So hold it in, bring it out to the side and then just give that little tug on the arm. Yeah, I can really feel that, but it's, it's a hurt so good moment for me. Good. Just try to relax into it as much as you can. And I know that's a hard job. And then as you bring that leg up, lift, and now we're pushing the ball inward, but we're not going all the way to the spine. And then here, this is that drawing the leg in, stretch the other leg down and bring it over the side just a little bit. So I'm, I'm affording my hamstrings an opportunity to relax into a nice stretch, which feels wonderful. The first round they felt super tight, kind of burning feeling, but not, I could tell it wasn't a dangerous kind of feeling. Um, otherwise I would have backed off, but now I can feel they're really loosening up and it's all emanating from up here in the buttock area. It's amazing. Good. And then from there, I'm going to place that ball back square into the glute, drop that leg down, stretch it out, and you can either keep that opposite knee bent. I'm going to stretch both legs out and I'm just really engaging in that compression into the buttock. I say that with real intensity, buttock. Good. And then release from there and then go ahead and roll it over to the side and push yourself up and come back to your seated posture. So we're coming back to this. Right now I can tell you my buttocks feel so fluffy and light. It just feels like I've got a lot more space. And for those that suffer from sciatic nerve issues, sometimes this can be a huge helper. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually utilize the block to rest the hips on with the balls on top of the block. 
So if you don't have a block, remember a big book is very helpful. So whatever works for you, and if you don't have it, don't worry about it. It'll work out. It all works out. Strap handy, and as I roll back, I'm lifting the hips, and I'm placing the balls on top of the block, and I've got my butt right on top of the balls. And then I'm just going to hold right there. If you can balance your butt on the balls, and if you've got a square centered in the balls because we've fluffed up that tissue so much, this isn't a huge stretch. You're going to make sure that they're anchored in and then lift your feet up. Now I've got my ankles crossed, knees are together, and I'm just gently circling the knees in one direction. It's not, you can barely see the circling motion. I'm kind of going in such a narrow range of motion. And then circle in the opposite direction. And let's take some deep breaths. Good. And then rest your feet back down to the mat. Grab your block. One leg up. Anchor the strap. And go back to that little circling motion. And just keep circling that leg around. And then circle the leg in the opposite direction. I don't know if you witnessed the full moon last night. Um, I think it went full late in the afternoon and, and into the night, but it was absolutely stunning. But there's a lot of cosmic activity that's going on right now. So um, if you feel like you're facing a lot of just uh, different issues that feel like they're difficult to allow yourself to circumvent and you feel like you're kind of fighting your way through life, um, come to yoga. We're going to talk about a little bit of that in the beginning of class. So try to come back and join us at 10 o'clock. And then release and swap it off to the other foot. Other foot is down. I have a knee bent. Some people really like to stretch the leg out because it gives that hip flexor a little bit of a stretch. But that's a little too much on my low back. So I keep my knee bent. And then we're just circling this other leg around. Yeah, that feels good. It's intense and that's a hike to get your hips that high, but it feels really good. And then we're going to be coming into some basic stretches. And then the dreaded IT band. Good. And then release from there. So when you draw yourself out of this posture, you're just going to lift Draw the balls out, rest your hips on the block first, or your book, whichever one you're using. And that gives your back one stage of recovery instead of just dropping the hips all the way down. So just relax here. And then lift and move that block out of the way and bring your hips carefully down and then drop your knees from side to side. And then roll yourself over to one side. I'm going to roll this way. Bring yourself up. And then come back to your seated posture. How's that feel? I know. When you think about how it felt in the very beginning when you were starting your practice and how it feels now, it's amazing what starts unfolding. So get yourself a little water. Super important. Hydration. And then we're going to move into a forward fold. I do like to use my strap. I've, I've actually got a pretty good range of motion where I can reach my toes. But sometimes what I do is I sacrifice the beauty of what unfolds with a really good forward fold when you give yourself a strap. So as I'm sitting up tall, I'm just going to bend my elbows and slowly bring myself forward. And then straighten my arms out a little bit more. 
And right from there, I can feel the stretch into my hamstrings. I could probably go deeper, but I would probably feel like I'm forcing it a little bit. So here, I've got a great stretch going on in the back of my thighs, right into my glutes. Can you feel it into your glutes? And just give yourself a few breaths. and then release from there. Now the next movement is a seated twist, but the option that we offered a couple of weeks ago is to lift up one foot, cross it over and rest it on the block and make sure that block is close in. Then you're gonna kinda hike up the hip, grab onto it with the opposite arm and pull that knee across as you're turning in. What this does is it really does activate that gluteal stretch again. You don't have to do it this way. So if this is a big stretch for you and it's like, gosh, Leslie, it's uncomfortable for me to do that. Don't do it. Just do the range of motion that you are most comfortable with because you will be still achieving the stretch that your body needs. Then just give yourself two more breaths here. Stomach is growling. And then release, and then switch it to the other side. Just picking up that foot, resting it on the block, kind of rolling up that hip and moving into the twist. And again, my left side, which is what I'm working on right here, is actually feeling the intensity of this stretch far more so than the right, which is really interesting to me because it's gonna make me think a little more mindfully about how I'm moving today. I do that every once in a while where I think about mindful movement. How am I walking? Am I rolling my foot out? Am I, am I favoring one side of my body more than the other? Is one side more fatigued? So I think about, about my body in components as opposed to the whole. And just give one more breath here. And then release. And then as you move that block to the side, go right back to that forward fold, and you may find that you have a little bit more range of motion. It's amazing. When we start to open up companion muscles in our body, our, our body just responds beautifully. It really does. It's almost like your body starts to express gratitude with its increasing range of motion. Good. And then release from there and just pop those legs around a little bit. Good. So when you roll it back to your mat, I'm going to use my block this time to support my head and I'm going back to the large ball. And as I roll it back, big ball behind one side of the buttock. And then I'm pushing around it and this is when we're going to start moving right into the IT band. So remember that your IT band emanates from very high up onto the pelvis on the lateral side and then runs all the way down. And so this is, you, you can't really stretch it, but what you can do is open up and fluff up that connective tissue, rehydrate it in other words, so that the IT band can move a little more liberally as far as its function in supporting your hips. So as I roll over to the side, I'm right up to the outer hip here. So I'm right on the outside, the lateral hip. And then I'm pushing the hips forward and back. I know for those of you that have been in class with me the last couple of weeks, we've been spending a lot of time on the IT band um, because it's just a really important area of your body that can help relieve tension through the shoulders as well as the lower part of your body through the calves and your feet. When we make the jump, remember the greater trochanter is that bony prominent place where the thigh meets the hip socket. And we're going to go over that. We're not going to compress into that joint. 
We're just going to lift up, roll the ball down so that it's at the top part of the outer thigh, the lateral portion of your thigh. So just lift up, bring that ball down. That is sensitive for most. And I'm still pushing across it. The, the, uh, that particular tendon runs vertically, right? So we're going across the grain of the tendon and that helps really do a lot for that connective tissue. So just keep pushing the hips forward and back and then lift up, go a little lower, push forward and back. And then keep going. Bring it down a little lower. You're gonna reach a point where you can drop the hip down and then push the leg across it. And if you're like me, this is always difficult to get across. I get a little edgy when I do my IT bands. And just keep rolling the ball down a little farther. You're headed right towards the um, upper portion of the knee. And then go down a little farther. and then release from there. Come to your seated posture. Again, that's kind of our home base. And that really starts to feel so much looser, right? It really does. So let's swap it to the other side. Gosh, the time is going by so fast. It goes by so fast. And you're rolling it down. Again, I'm using the block to support my head. Lifting up and I'm centered to the mid section of the opposite buttock and I'm just rolling circularly around for you walkers, hikers, bikers, um, runners. This is just a really good thing to do. And then also for those folks that have been full on in, you know, seated mode at work, you know, maybe you've got a job where you have to sit a lot and you don't get a chance, maybe you don't have a standing desk to give yourself those opportunities to stand upright. And, and that's where we start to feel a lot of tension in the hips too, because of that um, being in that one position for a long period of time. If you have the balls and you're seated at a desk chair, you can pop a ball under one buttock and roll and then switch it over to the other side and that will really loosen up your hips. Then as I roll to the side, I'm coming right up to the outer portion. I'm above the greater trochanter and I'm pushing the hips forward and back. And that does feel good. It's a lot of work to do this sort of thing. It sure is. And just keep rolling. And then we're going to make the jump over the greater trochanter so that we're in the top part of your upper leg on the outside, the lateral side. So go ahead and lift up and move that ball down. And here you're probably balanced on it. You can also kick that upper leg so that you have that as a little bit of a foundation to support yourself in the movement. And then just bring the ball down a little bit lower and keep rolling across it. This will help me today. I'm going to head outside and get a little exercise because it is so gorgeous outside and I need that vitamin D. And so I'm going to be really well prepared by the time I finish doing this as well as my yoga class. And then bring it down a little farther and keep pushing across that leg. For those of you that might be joining us for the first time or it's been a while, don't forget the topics, popular topics um, on this page section is, I think it's up and over to the right on most devices. It may be someplace else, but look for that on our group page because that has all of the archive videos that we have started since the beginning. And we're going to keep this group running for as long as it takes. So I'm, I'm just really so glad that you're with us. Every once in a while, we will have technical difficulties. 
and you, most of it is because of me, the operator error. So keep pushing it down, you're headed towards just above that knee. And then go down a little bit more. Once you get just above the knee, just push that ball right across it. It actually does start to feel like things loosen up. And don't forget, if you're on a hard floor like I am, you may need an additional yoga mat or even a towel underneath you or a blanket if you're feeling like it's too much pressure on your joints and, and your body as, as a whole. You can always make that accommodation. And then release from there. Come to that upright seated posture again. And just check in. Take a breath or two and remember how you felt when you first moved into this posture. For me, I was super tight in the hips. I didn't realize how much tightness I had on one side versus the other. And as I gradually started to roll, just focused in one section throughout the hips, it has opened more and more and more. Till now, I just feel very relaxed through the hips. So let's move through those last, those stretches that we did before, the seated forward fold and the twist, one more time. So keep your blocker book handy. And that will bring a close to our practice today. I hope you're feeling really good. And then just go ahead and lean into it. By doing even more work, you may find that you have greater range of motion. You can get into the stretch deeper. But remember, the depth of the stretch that we want is when we really begin to feel the stretch, but we're holding the posture so that we are in alignment. And it's not looking for a perfect, it's just looking really for an alignment that is comfortable for you. And then release, and either with or without the block, either foot in or to the outside, lift up and cross into it for that stretch. I'm gonna drop the block out this time and just go into the stretch like here because I feel like this is what my body needs right now. And then release and switch it to the other side. And then release from there and just come to a comfortable seated posture. Take a deep breath and just exhale the air out. And check in. It's these little kind things that we do for ourselves that make such a difference. We're an energetic society. We like to do things, we're very active. But in self-care, you have more to work with at the end of the day. So I'm so glad that you joined us today. And I hope if you're moving on through the rest of your day, it's the best day ever. And if you're joining us at 10 o'clock, that's Pacific Standard Time, to finish up your morning with yoga, be sure to remember to check our page for schedule changes starting next week. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a super day and I'll look forward to it. Bye-bye.